To be a skilled dragon boat paddler, you need a combination of both strength and endurance. But most of all, you must have good technique. Even the strongest paddlers will struggle against a well-drilled crew with technically proficient strokes. We'll begin by taking a look at the setup, the way you position yourself in the boat. As you take your seat, press your outboard hip against the side of the boat. With everyone doing this, you can check to see if the boat is balanced. The hip should be square, with the pelvis set in a neutral position. Extend your outboard leg, ensuring that your knee is in the same alignment as your foot. Brace your heel against the ridge beneath the seat in front of you, and tuck your inboard leg beneath your own seat. Some paddlers prefer to place their inboard leg to the front, and this is okay, as long as they're locked into the boat. Taller paddlers often find it more comfortable to adopt a kneeling position. Ultimately, locking yourself in with your feet forms a good solid base to be able to reach forward from. The way you hold your paddle also has an effect on your technique. To ensure a secure grip, many paddlers wear gloves, use a thin grip tape, or apply wax to their paddles to prevent their hands from slipping. Hold the paddle with a relaxed grip over the top handle and grasp the shaft with the bottom hand about a hand span up from the top of the blade. This grip forms a strong D-shaped frame. Keep the bottom arm completely straight, slightly bend the top elbow, then reach forward and twist to bring the paddle down towards the water. The stroke cycle is broken down into four phases. The catch, the power phase, the exit, and the recovery. We'll begin with the part of the stroke where the paddle first enters the water, the catch. It's also the most crucial part of the stroke. An effective catch requires a paddler to extend forward and place the paddle in the water well in front of their body at a positive angle. This is achieved by fully extending the bottom arm, reaching forward and at the same time rotating the torso while hinging from the hips. Notice how the chest is turned towards the centre of the boat. You'll be feeling pressure on your outside leg as you reach forward and down to the water. A common saying from coaches is down on the catch. This is referring to getting your body down to the water and over the catch. The head stays balanced, looking up the boat towards the strokes, making sure that your neck is nice and relaxed. The top arm is kept away from the face with a slight bend in the elbow and held over the bottom hand. To enter the water cleanly, take your body down towards the gunnel with the paddle at a positive angle and fully submerge the blade. Only then should you pull back. It's essential that the blade is locked into the water before applying the power. If you get it right, there'll be a minimum of noise on entry. But if you hear a splashing or a plopping sound, it means that the blade is either not fully buried or you're pulling back too early. If you're standing on the shore watching a boat paddle past, it appears that the paddlers are pulling water past their bodies. In fact, once a blade is locked into the water, it moves very little in relation to its entry point. What's really happening is the boat is being pulled forward towards this point. A solid catch is the key to a strong power phase. From the catch, the paddle shaft must be kept at a positive angle to provide as much resistance on the blade as possible. The power phase starts with a solid leg drive, pushing off the heel of the front foot in conjunction with the use of the core muscles brings the body back to a neutral sitting position. Your focus should be on keeping a strong frame. Keep the bottom arm as straight as possible throughout the power phase. This ensures that you're using your core rather than the small muscles in your arms. The top hand follows the line of the gunnel to keep the blade at a positive angle and in a vertical plane throughout the stroke. The power phase ends halfway down the paddler's thigh. Accelerate the blade to this point, but don't go past it. If you do go past this point, the paddle angle will become negative, which will slow the boat down, and you'll potentially scoop water into the boat onto the paddler behind you. To exit the paddle cleanly at the thigh, Bend your elbow slightly outwards to slip the paddle diagonally out of the water. By angling the blade in this way, it should pop out of the water without any resistance. Although we focus on a straight bottom arm during the power phase, 
it's okay to bend it slightly outwards as the paddle exits the water. Ensure that you don't use your shoulder to lift the paddle out of the water. And also ensure that the inside elbow doesn't drop below shoulder level as you finish the stroke. Keep a strong D-frame with your top arm slightly bent and around shoulder height as you return forward to the catch position. As the name suggests, recovery is that part of the stroke where energy is not being expended, moving the boat forward. Recovery is achieved by setting up for the next stroke, rotating the torso and reaching forward. You'll notice that as you drop your outside shoulder to the water for the next stroke, your inside shoulder will automatically move back to give you the rotation. A clean recovery can make a huge difference to the run of the boat. Keep it smooth with your weight centered. A couple of good drills to practice a recovery phase are pause paddling or hit and glide. Well, that completes the basics of paddling. It might look pretty straightforward, but like any skill, it takes time to perfect. So whether you're trying dragon boating for the very first time or competing in the national team, perfecting your technique is vital. So remember, listen to your coach, get plenty of practice, and most of all, have fun.